good day to you. My name is Fred Oakman, and as always, with me today is Mr. Jake Peters and his cat. And we are PS This Is Awesome, a PlayStation podcast. This is episode 246, and this is a show where we share our feelings about the current state of PlayStation. But before we get on with our show, I want to invite everybody to subscribe to us on our channel over at YouTube. YouTube.com slash PS This Is Awesome. I believe they're introducing this handle thing, so it can be like hashtag PS This Is Awesome as well, I think. So you can visit us on Twitter as well, at PS This Is Awesome. If you want to make fun of our trophy list on the PlayStation Network, you can find me at anchorless underscore 81 and Mr. Jake Peters at jakesaw01. As always, you can write our show at Gmail. It's PS This Is Awesome at gmail.com. Yeah, we have a Gmail account, folks. And most importantly, don't forget to share this show with your friends and make sure you leave comments and rate this podcast as you see fit. And as a reminder, we're a video podcast as well, so if you don't want to just listen to us and you want to see us talk to one another and watch Jake pet his cat, you can do that on YouTube. So go watch the show if you want. Get us some some views over there if you're interested in doing that. And you can always interact with us on the YouTube channel as well. Leave comments on each episode, and we will get do our best to get back to you. Um, and uh, as a reminder... Uh, we have a Patreon now. So this podcast has really gone from zero to hero. And uh, you can support the show at $1 a month. That's like, that's nothing. Um, $1 a month. And uh, you can help us out. And it's called the One and Only $1 Club. And you can head over to that at patreon.com slash PS This Is Awesome. And in return, we're going to mail you an exclusive vinyl die cut sticker and we'll give you a shout out on the show so you can't beat that ladies and gentlemen so thank you to all of our current patrons thank you for uh, everything that you've done because we don't really do much but just give you a free episode once a week maybe a little things here and there i have been putting little things here and there on patreon every once in a while just for our patron patrons um stupid things but uh Nonetheless, maybe something that's relevant to the show that we talk about that maybe the average listener doesn't get a little window, a little slice of the pie there. Um, for instance, I was talking about a miniature I was painting recently, and I posted the the picture on there just so people have a little reference if they want to have it. Um, but that out of the way, Jake, it's a beautiful October day, and uh, I'm curious how you're doing over there. Um, So two things. One, I... We was thinking about this last week when my cat likes to jump up in my lap when I'm sitting at my computer. And so I'm like, I always just like absentmindedly pet her whenever she's laying on my lap. Yeah. And because you, you crop the, the screen whenever you put the, the video in OBS. Yeah. I don't know if, if you can actually, like a lot of the times I imagine you probably can't see the cat and I always wonder if it like looks like I'm fucking masturbating or something <laughs> like like on the camera and it just like makes me really uncomfortable to think about but I'm not going to stop petting my cat so I promise to the listeners I'm not masturbating off screen I'm petting my pussy so um, <laughs> <God>. <laughs> the, wow. uh, the, the, the other thing was is that this weekend is uncharacteristically beautiful for October mm. in Northwest PA. Mm. So, um, did a lot of stuff outside today, went on a motorcycle ride. I think you did too. Yes. And, uh, took the dogs outside to do some playing and tomorrow's supposed to be even nicer. So mm. I don't know. I think there might be a little bit of clouds tomorrow, but it's supposed to be even warmer. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. and Monday's supposed to be great too. So you gotta try and soak that shit up while you can. I'm going to get the bike because... out of tomorrow for sure then. It's uh, probably like after this little warm spell, it's going to go back to being fucking cold and miserable like most falls in PA. Yeah, usually it's just rainy and you, <laughs> dude, uh, I love what everything you said, but I will say that like we have had an exceptional fall when it comes to the leaves. They're freaking yeah, it's been pretty, gorgeous. It, it's been pretty good. The... This this area is not the best when it comes to the leaves because we have the thing that's interesting is that we have so many different types of trees here that our leaf like the season of our leaves changing is longer 
but they don't all change at the same time. Right. So usually like like you have these patches of like some have no leaves, some have green leaves, some have yellow leaves or orange leaves or red. It's not like in some areas where they have, let's say, a majority of their trees are, are maples or something like that, where it's like all of them are ye- fucking orange at the same time, Yeah. which is like really cool. We We have a tendency to have – this really like staggered leaf thing and so like we were out today on the bike and we would go through some of these places that like it would look awesome for you know a little bit and then there would be like a bunch of fucking dead trees you know, like no leaves yeah, trees, and yeah so, so it's it's just really kind of strange but uh but they I look the, great the right now. Of the beast. yeah they do look good it's cool like uh i think that when you get those, the ones that are the best are like those hardwoods, like the maples and stuff. They all turn yellow or orange before they fall off the tree, mm-hmm. as opposed to like a lot of. I think a lot of the softer woods they they like fall off as they're changing. So you get like those trees that are like half populated, yeah. but they'll be like orange or whatever. So, um, but it is cool. Like we were riding around, and like occasionally, just a tree would catch your eye, and you're like, "Wow, that looks fucking awesome!" It's almost Especially like you got to wear sun. sunglasses. Like some of those trees look like they're on fire. Like they're just like bright yes. orange or like bright yellow, and you're just like, "Whoa!" Especially when the sun's out, like it was today. Yeah, dude, beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Yeah, it's beautiful awesome. fall. And I'm not. I'm like I said. I like I've said on the podcast before. Like I don't like fall because I don't like the cold wet, but. There is like days like today where it's like sunny and the wind's not blowing real bad and you get to experience the trees and be outside. It's like it is I would I will admit it is one of the better times to be outside roaming around. Yeah, especially on a bike, man. So I've got a couple funny quick stories before we get on with the the, the PlayStation. Well, first off, I was going to go see a Lucero tonight. So which is why we're able to do the podcast tonight. They canceled. They've been canceling like the last three or four shows. And uh, they were going to play in this podunk town down the road called Titusville. And uh, known for, I believe, oil back in the day. I believe that's where Drake's Well is. I, I don't, where's, Titusville is known for their oil, right? Yeah, like the whole, that whole region, like Titusville, Oil City, all that stuff is like, Drake's Oil Well is in Titusville, I think. Yeah, which is like. Or like in the Titusville area. It's like where they discovered oil. Um, yeah. Which is crazy. And considering they found they, they invented the zipper here in where we're at Meadville, so we're right close to like some really important <laughs> stuff, but we don't get any cred. Um, yeah, really important stuff that like most people use every day, but don't actually think about. Yeah, it just comes from here. Yeah, but yeah. So, anyways, they they were gonna play in Titusville, which is like a very small town, um, and I think they were they're were playing a place called the Titusville Ironworks. And I believe how they got the gig is they were playing Buffalo the night before at an Ironworks in Buffalo. And whoever their booking agent was probably like, oh, there's an Ironworks in Titusville. Let's just do that up. So anyways, uh, 30 bucks a ticket. I had two tickets. I was excited to go see him. I love Lucero. And it was going to be so nice to just drive 20 minutes, not have to go through like a huge town or worry about paying for parking. Just fucking go to Titusville and go walk into this place and see Lucero play. It was It was like too good to be true as it turns out. Um, I believe someone in their in their entourage is sick at the moment, and they had to cancel a ton of shows. And when they rescheduled the Boston show for tomorrow, the twenty third, I was like, "There's no way they're going to play Podunk Titusville and drive nine hours back to Boston." Um, to, you know, there's there's no, especially when they canceled the show before, like the Friday show got canceled, and they were already in the New England area. Like, there's no way they're driving to Titusville to play that yeah. fucking show and then go go back to Boston. So, and I was right. They, they just canceled it. But the sad part is, is, you know, sometimes when they, when shows get canceled, they, they give you the option. Um, they'll post like a new date and they give you the option to hang on to that ticket or refund it. And I just got all my money back, which means the chances of Lucero ever making it to Titusville after the, after tonight, or they're probably never, it's never going to fucking happen. So dude, I like when you said that they were playing in, in Titusville, I was like, that's got to be a mistake. It wasn't, yeah. Like, their booking agent, like, has to have made a mistake. It because sold who out. Who is going to drive to Titusville? Did it sell it out? It was sold out. It's a big venue. It's a big space. It was sold out. They they couldn't. Yeah. That's the trick. When you get to be a, si- a band the size of Lucero, like, they play places like Pittsburgh and Cleveland and stuff. They don't realize how many fucking people like us drive two hours to go see their band play in a big city. 
Like, I would wager the majority of people that see those bands, bands of their size, half the crowd is from the big city, half are from elsewhere. So, like, if I'm sure if they just yeah. play a smaller city, man, they're gonna do just as just as well. And then just you know, don't make us drive all the time. You know, make the make the cityites drive. Anyways, that was my that's my Lucero story. Um, the other thing that was funny, yeah, I did go on a bike ride today. I just went around Tamarack and, and out a little ways, but I wasn't gone very long. But I had my um, my GoPro on, and uh, I was just scooting around on that Rebel. And uh, it, I went to uh, an overlook for the water, and you can pull down. And I was sitting there, and I was going to get like a nice picture. And I just hear on the road, ring, 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 and I, I turn around, and there's this dude on a fucking dirt bike, just like, like going, you know. And then I'm like, all right, well, that was kind of uncomfortable, just because like it like fucking hurt my ears, and I'm just trying to take like a, a picture. And then I'm like, all right, I, I go to line up, and I hear, ring, 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 and I turn around, and he's fucking wheeling the whole way, and he's just looking at me, like, and I'm like, all right, he's just showboating, all right. I kind of gave him a, a nod. And then I go back to take my picture. Ring, nin, 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 and he goes across again. And he's fucking wheeling again. And like he had a backpack. I'm like, what is this guy's deal? Like, like, I don't cool, man. You can do a wheelie. I have it on my I have it on my video footage, which is hilarious. So maybe I'll post that somewhere. It's the most weird thing. Um, <laughs> I don't understand like why bikers like think that it, everybody's like them. You know what I mean? Like, like I don't. Man, like, I'm not that impressed, you know? Like, but this guy was just, I don't know if that's his way of saying, cool, man, you're on a bike, check this out. Or, like, if he was just like, come up here, let's race. I don't know what the fuck he was doing. Um, what a weirdo. It was weird. Yeah. It's really weird. It's probably some, some freaking kid or something who's just on his dirt bike, just out of control. Just going I, off. Yeah. He was sending it, is, it uh, that's for sure. <laughs> It is. I do. So I'm a big advocate. I I I used to race dirt bikes. So like yeah. I I love dirt bikes and two strokes especially, which sound like that. <laughs> but like, and they're they're just loud and obnoxious, oh, but they're God. so fucking fun to ride. Yeah. But the the thing is, is that like I I do think that it's a little bit annoying, even from someone who loves that kind of that kind of thing. <laughs> I think it's annoying when they're just like riding down the road. Like they should not be on the road. No, no. Not like it's one road. thing to like get on the road and go to where you're going on a trail or something like that, but to just be fucking ripping wheelies down the road like in traffic. But like every time, <laughs> just, like he was just looking at me, like staring me down. Like he was a ways away. You know, I will give him props for having a helmet on. Um, which, Good for him. Yeah. So, I mean, he was at least doing that right. But I was just like, what is this guy's deal? Like, what, what's he want me to do? So, anyway, I get my picture. I get back on the road. And I'm like, I know I'm going to run into this dude in front of me somewhere. Like, he's going to be, like, wanting to high-five me or something. Like, he's fucking out of control. But, uh, no, no, no Maybe he's a thing. listener. I don't know where. He probably just ripped off into the woods or something. But, anyways, that was that story. But it's been a pretty good weekend. Uh, I uh, have some gaming stuff to talk about for sure. But... Um, before we get on with that, I, I, I did some some miniature printing and stuff. So I, I'm stoked. I made these really cool gargoyles here behind me and they're for an expansion for this board game I have called Cursed City I picked up. And uh, I so the weird thing, and, and I'll just go on a quick tangent and then and then we'll get on with the news. Uh, the, the the Games Workshop games, like I bought this expansion. Cursed City came with like, I don't know, freaking 70 minute miniatures or something, right? And uh, a lot of those... Uh, Warhammer games or rather games workshop games are do you know they're they're more like war gaming stuff. Um Cursed City's not. Cursed City's more like a uh narrative driven like uh quest, 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 boss, quest, quest, boss. That and it's all co-op. So it's a really interesting game. And uh the thing that Games Workshop does is that, that drives me crazy is they sell their miniatures individually. So like people who want to build big armies and they, they do the war gaming, the tabletop war gaming with like the, Oh, the orcs or all the fucking space Marines or whatever they do. They some of their armies and like to get like, I don't know, like five paladins or something. It's like fucking $45 for five little plastic guys. And you have to get those ones because the line of sight's right. It's all canon in their world, and you can't compete unless you have their figures. And it's like a bunch of bullshit. So they released this uh, expansion for Cursed City, which is not a war game. It's it's this very narrative, and it, and it is more narrative. 
but they don't include the fucking miniatures for it. You get all the cards for the minis that, that you're supposed to have. You get all the fucking extra dice, all the special tokens, the new set, the new campaign book. But it's like, oh, uh, miniatures sold separately. So I'm looking at it and like to get three, they're called fell bats, to get three little bats on a 40 millimeter base, like $45. And you and and like to get like the vampire lord, the boss, it's like he's like forty bucks, and he's like this fucking big, and it's like, thank God I have a three D printer because I'm just gonna proxy the shit out of those miniatures and find cool ones online and just print them off and say these are those guys. Um, so ridiculous. Anyways, hmm. I'm am do- done. I'm done. Yeah. I. Anyways, I did buy the expansion, but and I and I bought it knowing that those figures didn't come in the box, and this was my plan the whole time. But it still really bothers me because I'm having trouble finding a couple miniatures to proxy, like the one female vampire who has like this really long like cape behind her. I was hoping to find something somewhere that I could just get the STL file for like three or four bucks and just fucking print it off, but I can't find it. So I have the bats, and I have one of the vampire lords. And there's two other characters, two or three, that I still need to figure out what I'm going to do. But the gargoyles, like the bat things, turned out fucking rad. Better than the Games Workshop ones. So I'm stoked. Um, anyway, so I, that's my tear. Uh, let's get into games we're playing, and then we're going to get into some feedback, although we don't really have feedback. Um, let's just let's cover the feedback thing real quick. I want to apologize before we get into this show any further. Last episode, when I was trying to watch that video of the girl playing the violin, I had music kick on to the show, and uh, I was just like, oh, I'll just I'll just clip it out of there. But as I was doing it all, I realized that by clipping it out of there, all of my timestamps that I write for our episode got all jacked up from that point onward, and I was like, I'm not going to sit and re-listen to our whole episode and figure out all these different points, so what I did was I scrambled the audio, <laughs> so our podcast, there's like this weird, I put this thing on there where it's just, uh, it's almost like a, uh, it bended the sound a little bit, and our voices got real weird, it was like a phaser or something for like 20 seconds in the middle of that podcast, um, and someone did write in, I think played by Ken wrote in, was like, man, I'm, I thought my phone was messing up, or I thought my, you know, because it does, it sounds kind of fucking weird, but I thought it sounded intentional enough that like people would just be like, oh yeah, clearly, you know, this is on purpose, but I guess I wasn't super transparent with it, and then I was like, well, maybe I'll just put like a little message on before the show, and talk about that, and say this is going to be on... But then if I did that, it still messed up all my timestamps. And I wasn't about to redo any of those timestamps because that's like my biggest pet peeve. So that was my workaround. So if you heard that last episode, that's what it was all about. I was just trying to keep us from getting uh, getting uh, whatever, str- a strike on YouTube or whatever the hell for the video podcast. So that's what I did. Um, but uh, let's talk about games that we're playing, Jake. Um, I'm going to let you go first because I have a bit to say and you haven't said anything in a while. So... Um, I've been talking a lot. Go ahead. So um, I've been playing Deathloop, and I still love it. I haven't had a chance to play a whole lot this week because work's been crazy, and honestly, it's really not slowing down at all, so it unfortunately affects my gaming time. But I did download but have yet to start because I'm waiting till I'm done with Deathloop. I did download a Plague Tale Requiem. Ooh. So, I have not played it. So don't I mean I don't know anything about it. I won't spoil I just anything. I saw I saw it was getting really good reviews and like people some a lot of people really liked it. So, I decided to and I really liked the first one. So, I decided to download it and um I was thinking that that would might be my game after Deathloop. Yeah. But I was just watching the, and maybe we'll talk about this later, the um, <laughs> Resident Evil showcase uh, on Friday, and I haven't played Village yet. Did I let you borrow my exp- copy? No, no. So, but I think it's on like PS, it might even be on PS Plus now, but that expansion looks fucking dope. So, I really want, and I was just thinking of, and they were, they were covering like Resident Evil 4 Remake and all this stuff, and I was thinking like, man, I really kind of want to play a Resident Evil game now. So, like, I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. But, yeah, I've just been playing Deathloop. Still really, really liking it. I think it's a fucking awesome game. Um, But I don't have anything new to say about it. All right. Fair enough. Well, I kind of play the same games all the time. But this time around, 
Uh, maybe I'll surprise the listeners. I've been talking a big game about uh, how I'm going to buy Death, or uh, not Death of Jesus. Uh, I was going to buy Plague Tale on day one. And uh, I did. I bought it day one, sight unseen. Didn't even look at reviews. I had faith that it was going to be good just based on the way they were promoting the thing, the way it looked. And uh, I don't regret it. I don't regret it at all. Um, I just want to talk about it briefly without spoiling it, Jake, because I know a lot of people probably haven't even played it yet. But it is a con- continuation of a uh, Hugo in Amicia story. And uh, the rats are back. We know this. It's in the trailers. Um, And uh, it seems to be everything about the first one. This one seems to be like better on all fronts than the first one. Um, I don't think that I fully. I don't know. The combat in the trailer makes it seem like it's maybe a little more action. Um, I haven't ran into that if that's the case. There's still a lot of stealth, but the story is fantastic. And uh, the graphics are so freaking good. Um, This game is so pretty. And uh, it's so good. And the voice acting and everything is spot on. Uh, The price point's $59, which is amazing because it's a PS5 game. Um, So uh, $59 for it. And uh, I, I... I'm on like chapter six or seven, I think. And uh, I'm really, really enjoying it. And uh, it's just one of those those games that uh, is almost in a strange way relaxing to play. But I don't need to go into it too hard here because you haven't played it. Um, I'm sure we'll get back to talking about it whenever you dig dig your heels in a little bit and, and get, get, uh, get into it a little bit. But... I wanted to let the listeners know there's a big Halloween sale going on. I've been playing Darkest Dungeon. Darkest Dungeon is on sale for $5 right now in the PSN mm-hmm. store. That is an insane price. I don't know what the Ancestral Collection is, but I would get that because you do have access to new heroes and stuff. That's probably a little more than the $5 version, but it's on sale also. But because I own it, I can't see the price unless I were to like log out of the network and try to go look at it. So I don't know what the Ancestral Collection costs. Um, but I highly recommend that game. There's also some other games on there that are a killer price point. Sean, uh, a listener, a patron of the show, did a review for The Evil Within, which we'll be covering next episode on the Halloween episode. Evil Within mm. 2 is $5 on the PSN right now on the Halloween sale. Um, I picked it up. So uh, not even based on Sean's review. I just I played the first one, and uh, I wanted to try the second one. But... I never got around to it. And I think, Jake, you you said you had it, but you thought you had purchased it digitally. So I wasn't able to borrow that one. I borrowed the first one from you. Uh, Yeah. You weren't sure. I, feel like I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, I have both of them. I played both of them. Yeah. They're both great games. Yeah. I mean, I, I really like both of them. I know some people have issues with them, yeah. but I honestly, it's especially the first game, I really enjoyed. Yeah. Um, I'm excited but, to play the second one for sure. Um, yeah. So I got that. The second one gets a little bit more insane, but yeah. Well, I just yeah. There's some really good deals going on, so I picked up Plague Tale Requiem and I picked up Evil Within Two. And then, as a reminder to the listeners, before we get into the news, the uh, the game of the month, which I have downloaded, I haven't even touched yet. If I'm being transparent, because now I've got Plague Tale, and now we're looking at probably God of War coming out really soon. And um, but the game is Hot Wheels Unleashed, and I need to spend a little time with it. And uh, I've been also watching the Netflix uh, TV series or the series called The Watcher, which is just freaking fantastic. If you haven't watched that, it's all the buzz right now. Um, you should watch it based on a true story. They, they take a lot of liberties with the story on the Netflix show, obviously, to make it more interesting. But it is based in some, some fact, but aren't most stories. Anyways, that being said, uh, if you want to join us and uh, join our discussion next week when we talk about our experience with Hot Wheels Unleashed, you can go ahead and do that and uh, get your get it free if you're a PlayStation Plus Essentials member. And uh, what else was going on? I feel like, oh yeah, in next episode, just just as a little tease, uh, what, what you guys are going to be getting, we're going to do a Halloween episode next episode. And Jake and I got to pick our top five scary games. And we're going to, you know, I don't know, I guess we'll just go back and forth, I think is the plan. We got a review from Sean. And then uh, we're going to do a regular show on top of it. So... Um, and you'll probably have a long extended intro that I wrote uh, two or three years ago for Halloween episode. So get excited. We've got a cool Halloween episode coming your way. 
Um, let's get into news. Back to Plague Tale Requiem, per the PlayStation blog, which I like to go to all the time. In an interview over the PlayStation blog, director Kevin Chate, or Chateau, this comes from Push Square, um, was asked whether Requiem represented another chapter in an ongoing story um, and was refreshingly forthright in his response, stating, I think for now it's the end, but the door is never closed. And we'll mm. see the player reception. Uh, we want to see their reaction before deciding anything. They're driving our production, and if they don't like what we've done, we need to do something else. So the transparency uh, that he has is is just so it's so obvious, his response. It's like, you know, we're not going to promise anything right now. We're going to wait and see if you guys like it. If there's a demand for another one, maybe we will. But right now, there's no plans to do it. Well, I haven't played it, so I don't know. I mean... I, from what I understand, the story is pretty great in this one. So maybe it it kind of finishes up in a way that doesn't really lend itself to another game. It's possible. And maybe if they make another game, it will be like a, a new character or something like that. Mm. I, I don't really know. But um, it could be like a Last of Us kind of situation where the first Last of Us, I would have been totally fine if that was a one-off. They never made a sequel ever again. But they found a way to make a sequel to it, so we'll have to we'll have to see what they do. I mean, I I have a feeling that this game is going to be successful. Whether or not it's going to be as successful as it needs to be to to warrant a sequel, I don't know. <coughs> but I, uh, yeah, I mean, I I honestly am am these days I'm kind of a fan of when creatives dis like have the courage to let things go Mm. you know what i mean and like fight to just say that like this is the end of the story as opposed to just letting the publishers and shit being like well this is successful we need to make fucking six seven eight of them yeah drive it into the ground and because that's the american way right we 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 develop a million things nine hundred and ninety nine thousand of them fail but the ones that succeed we just we just wring them dry and drive them into the ground and then wait until the next big thing hits as opposed <laughs> to like some other cultures where like, I think I've brought up, I, I may or may not have brought up on the podcast before. We don't really talk a lot about anime here, but one of the things I always liked about uh, a lot of anime and I'm not even a big anime fan, but at least back in the day, I don't know if they still do this, but a big thing in anime was is that they would just make a fucking 26 episode arc of a series and that's it. It's done. And you're it's over. There's no more. Right. They might do like a movie that's a spin-off or something like that, but that story is complete. And so and I love that idea. Like for example, like the new the new Cyberpunk TV show, which you, you dude, you got to fucking watch. It's so good. Um, I, I, but I, I, the way that it ends, I'm like, I, they could totally just, this would be the end of it. Or if they make another, it's only 10 episodes or if they make another one, it'll be like a new story, kind of like an anthology, but like every season is Mm. a new thing as opposed to every episode. Um, I don't know, man. I, I, I think that the, it, it allows the story to hit harder. When you know there's some I mean? finality just, to it? When there's some finality to it. You know, like, if we know that, oh, because this is successful, there's going to be another one in a few years, it's not going to it's not gonna grab me as well. I mean, maybe I'm, maybe I'm kind of reaching with that, but I don't know. I think this is cool, though. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you're wrong, man. I, I think there's a lot to be said about that and I think that yeah it goes I don't I don't know it goes a long ways like as far as like did we need The Last of Us 2 I don't know did we need Uncharted 4 I don't know are they fine games yes are they great games sure it could be argued that they are and then they do the same thing in Hollywood movies do we need all these new Star Wars spinoffs sure why not Right? Do we need all all these Disney remakes? Sure, why not? We know they're tried and true stories. Sure. Do we need I don't know, man. I, I think like just letting something be what it is. There's something to be said about that. Let a bird be a bird. I'll quote John Moreland. Yeah, let a bird be a bird. 
That's it. It is what it is. I would say that it might be a little bit, <laughs> a little bit shitty to compare The Last of Us Part Two to like some of these fucking remakes that are happening the in Lion Hollywood King right remake. now. Yeah. <laughs> but like, <laughs> I, but yeah, I, I totally understand what you're saying, yeah. and I agree. <laughs> well, let's let's go to a news point that's not on, that's not next. It's on the list. It's the last bullet point, and you brought up Cyber, Cyberpunk Edge Runner, and uh, just to follow up on that. Um, uh, you know, we had some discussions about this this Netflix ep, uh, anime series, and I haven't watched it yet, but it is hyper violent. But they've come out and said they are not slated to get a sequel, and it was announced it was a standalone piece of work. So there you go. That's cool. I'm I'm into it. I mean, like I said, I I would maybe they make a if they make another series. Now this 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 doesn't necessarily close the door. It might just mean like let's say they make a new series. It's called like cyberpunk colon something else you know what i mean it doesn't necessarily need to be they could still make another cyberpunk anime and not have it be a continuation of the edge runner story middle walkers <laughs> <laughs> like i there's the, the 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 world of of night city is so rich they could they could make stories about literally anything yeah, like this, this, this is kind of a like I could see them doing three independent series or like seasons. Like Edge Runners is the story of like a street kid, and like maybe they make a a second series that's like the story of a fucking corpo, and then they make another series that's like this like a season that's like the story of a nomad, and then it would kind of follow the game a little bit. You know what I mean? Where there's like those three starting points that you yeah, have. Yeah, dude, and in between like, each cool. one. They have a they have a mini series called the E Ripper, and all it is is like an a, a Ripper doc, like installing the inst- like the installations on what the next protagonist is going to be for the next series. That would be fucking dope. <laughs> well, they do they do have some Ripper doc stuff in Edge Runners, uh, so it's it's uh, I mean it's it's cool, man. They they could do so much with you that, know they have like but... Surgeon Simulator. Why don't they do like? Ripper Doc Simulator, where like you get to put like the cybernetics in these people in like <laughs> VR. That'd be fucking rad. Yeah, that'd be dope. All right. Anyways, let's move on to the next news point. And uh, PS5 sales, um, Jake, are on the rise. And uh, you guys know I put out that uh, very world class um, short on YouTube when I discovered that they were everywhere. And uh, there's a recent stock revival, and uh, you can now probably find a PS5 if your efforts don't appear to, uh, and, the, and your efforts don't need to be very arduous or long. It seems, um, and Sony has now gone back to back, and they've topped the hardware charts month after month. So I expect the trend to continue for some time, and uh, I think this bodes well for Sony right now, especially during the crazy economical time frame that we're in now. Is this because I saw this video on Reddit of this guy literally with with a pallet of PS5s, and I sent it to you, Jake, just walking out the door with them. And you're like, dude, that has to be like $12,000 worth of PlayStation 5s. And I was like, yeah, easily. He bought them all, and he was just walking out the door with them. And straight up scalper. It's disgusting. Now, now that they're so available, do you think scalpers are just going to have a field day, or do you think they're going to slow down? I hope they all eat shit, to be completely honest with you. <laughs> Cause like just feed I, turds. I can totally, I totally <laughs> agree with the philosophy that like, you know, it's your right as an American to do, or not even necessarily an American, but like, you can do this. I mean, scalping is not illegal in the United States, but like, you're just taking advantage of people's lack of self-control essentially it's like they're like drug dealers basically (laughs) by like and they're profiting on this and what it does is it just like the thing is that sony has no incentive to prevent this right because those consoles are being sold so who gives a fuck as far as they're concerned but as far as the audience is concerned and like the consumer is concerned it's detrimental to like the what I would say the um this might sound a little bit kind of weird, but like it's almost detrimental to like the 
emotional health of the industry, if that makes any sense. Where it's like it's because because scalpers are taking advantage of people. It's like driving driving up this like fervor of like gotta have it, gotta have it. It's like ramping up this whole consumerism thing, and it's it's get it gets pretty dark if you really think about it. And so, like. If I, you know, if I go to a garage sale and I find like a, like one time to give you an example, I, uh, a a friend of mine, actually a friend of ours, um, Andy and I went to a garage sale once and they had a guitar amp for sale that was, the guy was selling it for like $20 and Andy and I are looking at this and we're like, this thing is worth way more than fucking $20. And so we just like gave him the sticker price on. Now, granted, this was back when I needed a little bit more money than I do now, but we did some research. And this was like a two thousand dollar fucking guitar amp, mm. and because it was like it was like an original like nineteen fifty eight Fender Deluxe, which is insane to think about finding it at a garage sale for twenty dollars. Mm. And so, you know, I did some work and I put some money into it, and then we sold it. I mean, we sold it for basically what it was worth. And, but that's like a once in a blue moon kind of thing. You know, it's not like I wasn't necessarily, I don't know. Did I, the the thing is, I guess the weird thing is like, did I take advantage of that person that was selling that guitar? I mean, maybe, but I didn't really know what it was worth either. I just figured it was worth more than what I was paying for. You were being opportunistic. And I think that could be said of the scalpers as well. But I think, the difference is is that you didn't go out looking to take advantage of somebody and flip something for money. You happened into a garage sale and saw something. You're like, oh, my God. And you also play guitar, too. It's not like – I bet you the majority of these scalpers don't even game. It's not like they're even invested yeah. in the shit. You know, they're not even interested probably. They just want the money. Well, and you know, it's one of those things where like I was – I, I enjoyed my experience kind of refurbishing it and playing with it a little bit before I sold it. So it wasn't like this thing where I just kind of flipped it, even though, I mean, I guess I technically did. I, I'll be honest with you. I don't have as much of an issue with this guy walking into Target and buying $12,000 worth of PS5s. What I have more of an issue with is these guys using bots to basically steal like all these PS5s online. Yeah, it's hard to it, say if he pre-ordered them and just was a walk-in pickup or something or if he just found them there. I mean, I don't know yeah, how you get a pallet really weird. of fucking PS5s. Like it was a legit pallet on a cart. Like they were pulling it behind, like a Home Depot cart, like pulling behind them. It was crazy. Anyway, yeah, I, I mean, I, it is what it is. I, I, I just feel bad for the people that... <clears throat> You know, listen to this show or just otherwise avid, avid PlayStation gamers that c- couldn't get a PS5 because, I mean, by now you should have been able to get one. But like, especially now with as, as re- prevalent as they are, but like, the only reason I was able to get one was because you were able to get two. Yeah. And... And that's not necessarily my fault. Every single time they were available, I was working or it was like at fucking three o'clock in the morning. And it's like, you can't, like, it's not my fault that I couldn't necessarily get a hold of one. That doesn't mean I'm owed one. Well, there were a lot of people who weren't working who knew were trying and still couldn't. And couldn't get them. So, I mean, they were hard to get. There's no denying that. And everybody should have one because the PS5, as much as it looks like a giant fucking heavy vagina, so is awesome. actually awesome. So What's wrong with I, giant I heavy vaginas? There's nothing wrong <laughs> with giant... I, I just say... I'm saying that like I don't like the aesthetic of the PS5. I wish okay. they would allow me... I understand. They're like... They, they're, now they're letting us... They're selling us these side plates... Maybe make one that like doesn't have the fucking flare at the top. Like just let let me get by one that's just like a flat sided, mm. you know, so that I can lay it on its side and not need that dumb fucking stand. Which always seems to or, fall off. Like anytime I want to dust and move my PS Five, um, it I I'm never sure if I've sit it right back on that thing right, you know. And I'm looking behind it and I can't get my head back there because I've got you know my console and stuff is my, my entertainment center is like kind of back against the wall i gotta pull everything out i gotta worry about like maybe an audio wire unplugging or it's such a pain like that little stand it doesn't really sit well on that and it's honestly 
it's easy to underestimate how fucking big the PS5 is. Yeah, I mean, I I feel like I I know well, at that at one point in time I, yeah, well I know at one point in time I sent you a picture of my Xbox Series S next to my PS5 and it's literally half the size. <laughs> it is ridiculous how big the PS5 is. Yeah, it's... but I don't know what the we're like on a digression in fucking Idaho right now. I don't know what the hell happened. But we're talking about PS5 maybe... sales and how they're up. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess. Maybe we should move on to the next Next point. news point. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So we had a pretty lengthy discussion last episode, um, Jake, and I'm sure you're familiar with it because you were there. Was It, it was mainly about uh, frames per second, uh, the FPS speed of current games. What is the expectation? What's going on? Gotham Knights had a huge, huge backlash um, because it was locked at 30 and surprisingly, Plague Tale is also locked at 30. I don't know if you knew this. It's it's 30. Mm. Um, it doesn't bother me. If you have 120 hertz TV, it'll hit 40, they said. Um, which still uh, just doesn't feel much better than 30. Um, but it doesn't bother me. Um, I'm playing it. It doesn't phase me. Uh, not going to jump from one to the next, though. I'm just going to stay with Plague Tale until it's done. Because we've already talked about this last show, if I fucking switch, Plague Tale's gonna feel. Well, dramatic. and this is what this is one of those games that kind of fits into that sort of paradigm that I was mentioning last week, which was that it's a very cinematic experience. Correct. So the the thirty frames, thirty to forty frames, kind of suits the mood of the game a little bit more. I'm not saying that it's gonna. Um, make you feel better in terms of the way that it controls but in terms of like the mood of the game and the atmosphere i think it probably helps i mean at least it doesn't hurt it in that regard i think well i've got good news for the listeners um we have news and this isn't spoilery about god of war ragnarok um this game can top out at 120 frames per second and it will feature four different graphic modes. And the modes are going to include favor resolution locked at 4K at 30. It's going to have a favor performance, which locks it at 60, which is probably going to be the, the standard. Um, you can favor resolution with a higher frame rate. So you'll get a 4K locked at 40, but you need the HDMI 2.1 on your TV. Or you could favor performance at a high frame rate, and this is crazy. It'll run at 120 frames per second, but HDMI 2.1 is required. So mm. I don't know what the visual fidelity difference is going to be between just the regular performance and then the regular and then the performance at high frame rate, if there's any. But doubling the frame rate just seems insane to me. Going from 60 to 120, Destiny 2 runs at 120 online. I do imagine that, um, how do I want to say this? I don't think that people are going to notice as big of a difference between 60 and 120 right. as they do between 30 and 60. Right. So I'd be curious to see how big of a dip in graphical fidelity there is between 60 and 120 frames on God of War. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say, and now this is a little bit cynical of me, but that probably the reason why this thing can fucking run at 120 on PS5 is because it's a PS4 game. Mm. So there is that too. Which and I, I I don't that sounds like I'm poo pooing it. I guess I probably shouldn't. I shouldn't be so negative about it. It's, it's gonna, gonna look gonna great. Awesome. The first the first one looked great, so this one's gonna look great even on PS4, PS5, whatever. So um, I gotta be honest. I don't know. Like in my opinion, at this like my current emotional state towards God of War right now is that I'm gonna play this game because i have to and i know that i'll like it but i'm not actively excited for it to come out <coughs> yeah you don't have to play like, it on, I, I, I do though like this is one of those games in my opinion that it's kind of like the last of us or uncharted sure. like you gotta like if you like playstation you've gotta play it <laughs> it may not end up it may not end up being for you but you're like 
if you're I, what I mean is that if you're if you're like a core gamer, not like a Madden Call of Duty guy, and I I don't mean that literally. I mean just like in the casual space. If you're a hardcore gamer, I feel like the onus is on you to at least try these games because they are literally they are like artistic milestones right within the genre yeah, yeah, within, the, uh, within the uh the space <clears throat> so and i would say the same thing it's not just playstation i would say the same thing about some mario games and some zelda games and fucking halo and gears of war like there are there are games within the ecosystem that i feel like you should at the very least try to play. Mm, mm. It may not be for you. Not everybody loves the Mona Lisa, but that doesn't mean that you can't try it and appreciate it for what it does to the industry. And right. I think God of the new God of War remake and hopefully the sequel is one of those games. So, and 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 like I said, I I know myself. I'll start playing this game and I'll fucking I'll after the first couple hours I'll be all in. Yeah. But just like, and I think that a lot of it too is less about the fact that it's God of War remake and more about the fact that I'm just like, I'm so fatigued on these like open world semi RPG kind of games Yeah, that like I get anxiety when I think about having to decide where to spend skill points and all this shit Mm. in games. That's one of the things that I'm actually – I think that's honestly one of the reasons why I'm loving Deathloop so much right now yeah. is because there's none of that. It's literally like I have these guns that I like and I can choose to spend this resource on these items if I want to save them for the next loop. Otherwise, it's literally just gameplay. I don't have to worry about fucking spending – whether or not I spent my points on the right thing. I don't have to worry about managing inventory really to an extent. And so that's kind of where I'm at. But uh, I think that this game's going to be great. And I'm actually really stoked to see. I don't know if I have uh, a 2.1 compatible HDMI cable, but if I do, I'm definitely going to check out this 120 I'm pretty mode, certain I'm really that the cable that came with the PS5 is that. Is 2.1 yes. compatible? They gave they gave everyone then a 2.1. Then it should be okay. I think I'm using that one. I should be okay. Yeah, I'm not sure if mine has that or not. I don't know what one I'm using. Anyway, I know I have it because I'm pretty sure it's shipped with one. Check the box or check the specs on the PS5. I believe it comes with a 2.1 HDMI cable. Um, you know, good on Sony. Anyways, um, yeah, I agree. I agree with you. Uh, I'm excited about God of War, Ragnarok. Um, definitely going to play it like you. You know, is it a mile marker game like Rochard was? I think so. So... I'll uh, <laughs> definitely make sure I get my shot in. Um, oh man, I I love Richard. <laughs> I I I wish that there was a. It, and if you don't own a PS3 but you have a PC, you can play Richard on Steam. Just saying. That's fun. I wonder if it's available on Mac. I'll pick it up. Dude, that game's sweet. There, there, if there's two two games that have defined the legacy of this podcast, it's Richard and fucking Warhammer Space Marine. Yeah. And we're getting a sequel to Space Marine. So maybe, dude, just maybe, because I don't know if you remember how Richard ended, but it almost is like a cliffhanger. Yeah. I, I, so, I like, that I 100% remember a lot of that game. I just remember really liking it. Yeah. It's so good. I, uh, I like anyway. to bring it up because it's funny. It's in the spirit of the podcast. It is, like you it said, it is fucking hilarious. Um, yeah, uh, excited for God of War Ragnarok. Uh, the one thing that bothers me about it's just frustrating because are they just trying to pander to the people at this point having all these different modes? How much extra work it's- is it for them to create the game to be able to run all these different modes? Is it just a switch of the graphic thing and then just internally like and then they're like, okay, let's see how it performs. The problem is, is like, okay, first off, you're a single player game. So that should take a lot of the stress like out of trying to figure out what the game runs at. Right. Because you're not relying on a on an Internet connection and other people's systems and stuff. So it's getting to the point. It's we got to find a middle ground. I feel like this is a little too far on the other side, right? Four different modes. I get it, but maybe that's where we are technology wise, 
maybe our systems just, you know, as a developer, they want to make sure that they can get it to show. It, it's almost like this. Let me just say this. It's like someone releases a movie, you get an ending, and then the director's cut has alternate endings. And it's like, yeah, we couldn't really figure out which which way we wanted it to go, which which experience was the best experience, which is like the de facto way to play the game. So here, now you have these options as a gamer. And it's like, I don't want the responsibility of picking out the best mode. Like, does the developer want me to play it at 4K lock 30? Do they want me to play it at locked at 60 favorite performance? Would they rather me do the 40K at 40 FPS with an HDMI 2.1? Or do they want me to do the 120 with HDMI 2.1? If I had to guess, I would say they want you to play it at 4K lock 30. And if you can, 4K at 40. I bet you that's how they would want you to play it. Mm. But they know they're going to get a backlash, and it probably feels better for sure at the 60 and 120 frame rates. And it's just like they're like, well, we put all this extra effort in. We can make it look super good, but at the same time, we can make it play really smooth too. So it's like I think at the end of the game, you almost – at the end of the day, you almost have to just be like – in what case, what? So this boils down to the argument: What makes a game better, gameplay or graphics? And they're so important in a game like this that the developer can't decide. And they're like, if you want the graphical experience, it'll play shittier, but you can have it, or you can't have your cake and eat it too, though. I honestly disagree with you a little bit, and that I always, <laughs> I love the ability to have more options as far as like, because on PC, I. I grew up as like more of a, I mean, I, I started out playing on Nintendo, but yeah. I became, I was a PC gamer for a long time and the ability to be able to kind of tailor your experience to, to the way that you like to play is kind of nice. And I think that a lot of this has to do with the fact that it is a PS4 on PS5 kind of game. I, I mean, right there, yeah. you can, you know, you can run, I guarantee you, you're not getting 120 Hertz on fucking PS4 basic. <laughs> Right. Well, because you can't so, do HDMI two point one with it, so yeah. Right. Right. So, I I don't know. Maybe they can do this, but I always thought that it would be kind of cool if they had the ability to, let's say, in like when you're playing, when you're actively playing, the game runs at sixty frames, but maybe when it shifts to a cutscene, it pulls back the frame rate a little bit to kind of and ramps up the resolution to mm. give you that like more cinematic feel during like this, you know. Yeah. But then, but now they're doing all this one shot shit, and it's probably hard to like transition without having issues. It's and complicated. It's, yeah, I don't know. It, it's it's definitely interesting, and I think that as an industry, we're still kind of feeling this out some. Mm-hmm. But I would say that I would al- almost always pick performance. I would almost always prefer the frame rate to be better to have a better gameplay experience. Especially when you're dealing with a game that's combat heavy, like, like God of War, where you have to worry about dealing with enemies, encountering, and all this kind of stuff. Right. So, um, I mean, that's a that, that's a conversation that you could have endlessly about how you want this to go. But I think that having more options, I'm not saying be overwhelming like PC and have like fifteen thousand sliders and right. a bunch where of you're different picking things. your screen like, resolution, like, like yeah, do the but slider, if you have like. <laughs> Right, but if you have like three or four different options, where it's like okay, you know, changing the FOV. if it gets much more than if it gets much more than what God of War of Ragnarok is, I would agree with you that it's getting a little excessive. That's what I'm saying. I think I don't think it's excessive yet, but it's definitely on that side of the scale, right? Like, you know, most games we just see two options: performance resolution. Now, this one essentially is that, but it's I think they've also upped it the options for folks who have the PS5, so that you you will have the option to play the game at 4K at 40 instead of 4K at 30, right? So they're like, it can run better at 4K on the PS5. Um, And I'm thinking that's probably how PS5 players who want the resolution boost are going to be doing it that way if their TV and their shit supports it. Um, But I I just, I I don't know. Like I, I, I like when we have little disagreements in the podcast and we see things differently because I think it opens better dialogue but yeah i i understand where you're coming from i just i don't know man like i don't i just kind of want the developer to tell me this is how we want you to play our game 
Yeah, I I can understand that. I think that I think that really the kind of the factor that has sort of muddied the waters a little bit is the ray tracing that works <laughs> natively on PS5. Like I I think that I I honestly believe that the newest Ratchet and Clank game did it the best, where it's like you can have you can have full performance mode, you can have full graphics mode, or you could have ray tracing with a lower resolution but a higher frame rate. Mm-hmm. And that like middle mode, which was awesome. That middle mode was perfect. Split the difference and give you ray tracing. Yeah, yeah. I I I don't know that you need this like one twenty hertz mode, but that might just be them utilizing the technology of of newer TVs. Yeah, which I guess I can kind of get behind. But I do think that ray tracing does add an element that you might want in addition to your 60 frames, if that makes any sense. So, because I would say that ray tracing, on a modern television, ray tracing makes more of a difference than going from 1080 to 4K. Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we, maybe we might have beat this horse to death, but I think that... I. Uh, more options are always better, but I don't know that I'd go much more than what Ragnarok has got here. Yeah. Well, let's beat the horse a little more, Jake, because I've got one more news point that involves this. And uh, this is a good one. It's actually good news. And uh, the Callisto Protocol is going to be at 60 FPS. So I don't know if they're going to give you a choice, but that's what it's, it's the options there. So. You know, whereas Plague Tale doesn't give you an option. It's just like, it's locked at 30, no choice. Now, they might roll out something in a patch down the road where they give you an option or they, you know, do some kind of update to the game. Because Plague Tale, uh, the first one, Requiem, is it? No, nope. what's the Innocence. other one? Innocence. Innocence, sorry, yeah. Plague Tale Innocence uh, got that upgrade for the PS5, and it runs at 60, I believe. But they have a bazillion rats in the new game, and uh, that might be the difference. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, yeah, let's. Mo- I'll be honest with you. I, this is a little bit of a sidebar, yeah. but like we talked about excitement for Ragnarok, Callisto Protocol is f- far and away my most anticipated game for the rest of this year. So I am so excited to play it. And the fact that I that now I know that it's at 60 frames, I mean, I kind of expected it at this yeah. point on PS5. Honestly, it's weird to me whenever a game comes out on PS5 now that it's not 60 frames, which we talked about last week. But, uh, yeah, I just wish Callisto Protocol, that would be like a perfect almost kind Halloween of game. Uh, Halloween game. It sucks they couldn't get it out a couple months earlier. I agree. But um, I agree. Pretty stoked. Speaking of Halloween games, though, this next news point you got here. Yeah, yeah. This one's this one's exciting. This kind of came out of nowhere for me, at least. I didn't realize this was happening, but it did. There was a Resident Evil showcase, and we need to discuss it. Um, first things first. This was actually featured directly on Sony PlayStation's YouTube channel, and the countdown going into this looked like it was the beginning of a state of play countdown, which is like, wow, they're really putting their mark on this thing. Um, and it was the same music and all that stuff. So I thought that was notable. I don't know what that means, uh, but I liked it because I love Resident Evil. And I like that Sony's putting their stamp somehow on this franchise, somehow weird claiming. And now this is interesting. But so the first, uh, we got to see Resident Evil Village running on PSVR 2, right? They weren't really talking about VR 2 so much as just showing us gameplay footage. And uh, they didn't really go into it too much. But we also got to see more DLC for Resident Evil Village. And that's called Shadows of Rose. And I believe you're Ethan's uh, daughter in this. And uh, she, it looks like she revisits the village. She goes back into the village. Um, not to mention the updates to Resident Evil Village also gives the user an opportunity to play the game in third person, which is huge. Um, and they made a point to show you that you can't really get around and see your character's face. Uh, he just kind of kind of looks away when you try to zoom around. Mm. Kind of looks away. They they don't want you to know because they don't fucking know what he looks like. That's why. Um, and maybe they're saving it for something down the road. But uh, and then uh, lastly, we got to see a lot of Resident Evil Four remake, and uh, we're gonna go through these bullet points together. So this is what we're talking about. And then and then they, we did get Reverse, which is the online game. Um, I believe it was free for people who purchase Village. 
but that's dropping October 28th, and they've done some overhauls to the look of the game, so it's not shell shaded anymore. Shell cell shaded anymore. So that's kind of exciting. So this is a really big feature. Um, did you watch any of this, Jake? So I watched the whole thing actually. Yes. And I didn't watch it live. I watched it after the fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same. Friday, yesterday night, last night. Um, and I will say a couple of things. One, I think this is an issue with like a like a tra- like a trans. I say translation in quotes issue between Japanese and the an, an, the American audience or the sure. Western audience, and that like it annoyed the shit out of me their flagrant use of world premiere in this fucking video because none of this shit was a world premiere, <laughs> and 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 what we expect to see as a world, world premiere. premiere. We expect to see like a new thing, not like, oh, this is a world premiere that's just it's just literally a new trailer for something we already know about. Right. So like I will say that as excited as this showcase made me for Resident Evil, I don't think it was necessary. None of this stuff was surprising, none <laughs> of it was new. It was just literally new trailers and shit for stuff we already well, the knew about. Resident Evil I will 4 say, remake stuff was new. Seeing that in yeah. motion was like a big deal. Yeah. So I will say two things. Three things we'll say. One, the 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 single player DLC for Village looks fucking awesome. I agree. I don't ever recall there being and this isn't really a spoiler because it's a trailer for a game that we haven't seen yet, but the I don't recall ever there being a protagonist in a Resident Evil game that has had any kind of supernatural power or component to them. Mm-hmm. And you see in this trailer, Rose has some kind of special ability. <clears throat> I don't know if she's affected with the T virus somehow, or I haven't played Village, so I don't know what the fuck's going on. Um, but it looks awesome. It looks so good. So, the r- second real quick thing, on that, just real quick on that, yeah. what they said when they were doing this. They said something to the effect that, like, the narr- the narrative, the story of this, is that she's actually trying to get rid of that special ability. Like, she doesn't fucking right. want it. Which is she what a want cool, it. cool take on, like, yeah. Yeah. And she's, like, she's like facing death to try to get rid of this power. That this she, really it's, fucking it's, rad I, thing. That's why I say, like, it's really intriguing to me. I mean, I'm excited about yeah. it. Um, two is that since they fixed the visuals on Reverse or R-E-verse or however the fuck they're yeah, pronouncing yeah, it. whatever it is. I'm yeah. not into these types of multiplayer games, but it actually looks really good. Yeah. Like, I think that it looks like a game that could be really fun to play. I hope it is. And, uh, and I hope it's successful. But I don't really have a whole lot more to say about that. Yep. The other thing was, and, I, and we already kind of touched on it briefly... The Resident Evil 4 remake looks fucking amazing. Dude. It looks so good. I love it looks, Resident Evil 4. How, how are they so, doing these remakes so fast? Because they're like, dude, the, whatever they're doing over there with the RE engine, dude, whatever they're using, I don't know what they're using, but Resident Evil 2, uh, what was it, 1 and 2 they did remakes of? What did they do the remakes of? 2 and 3, was it? 2, 2 and 3, yeah. They both visually and just gameplay wise we're just fucking overhauled and they're so good this looks like it's gonna be that almost to the next degree again it's like getting a brand new resident evil fucking game it's awesome i've never played four it looks great i hope dude you have to you have to play this i four is so good (laughs) i mean it's it's quintessential resident evil i i hope because after two they kind of and they did three it was like kind of in production at the same Mm. time they kind of had to continue the momentum and do four because that's what the audience sort of expected. But I, I hope they go back after this and remake one because one is really good. It's not – is it as good as the other ones? I don't know. But it is the the genesis of the fucking franchise. We have that game that GameCube port or whatever that that released on PS4 that I played recently that I really liked. But you're still dealing with the tank controls and the fixed camera and all this kind of stuff. And I would love to see them, after all the dust settles with Resident Evil 4 Remake, I would love to see them go back and remake Resident Evil, the original Resident Evil 1. And so that would be really, really cool. But yeah, overall, I would say that this this showcase 
other than their asinine use of world premiere, I think was a good showcase. And overall, it presented a lot of stuff that I thought was uh, was really cool. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I mean, all this stuff could have just dropped as individual trailers, but like, I don't know. I th- I thought it was uh, it was neat. It I'm shows brand for, strength uh, here. Yeah, it really does. And and to be honest with you, when I watched this, I really got the itch to play Village. Oh, Village is great. And Village is part fucking of me, great. Dude, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Part of me is thinking about waiting. I mean, I'm not going to get to it before. I mean, I'm not going to finish Deathloop before it comes out anyway because it comes out on the 28th. Um, part of me is thinking about maybe playing it in third person. Mm. Cause I just love. I mean, to be to be fair, I played seven. Seven was awesome in first person. I did really like it, but there's just something about that OG third person kind of experience with Resident Evil that it just like captures me nostalgically as well as sort of from a excitement perspective of the game itself. So, um, I don't know. I guess I don't really have a whole lot more to say about that, but, uh, yeah, it's, Mm. it's cool. I'm excited Mm. for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. I'm excited too. I was happy that this happened because it gave us something, uh, kind of beefy to talk about. Let's go to the next news point. And, uh, this one's kind of exciting. Um, and it's not even, exciting for any other reason that I want to flex a little bit. And it's not even that big of a flex because everybody predicted this for the most part, but I predicted it too. Um, the Pro Controller, the DualSense Edge, uh, received a price. And uh, I guess the situation is is that I called it two, uh, 199 I said 200 It's the same thing. And I found my tweet thanks to the person on YouTube who said, you guys need to put timestamps on your thing. I was able to find it. And the title of the show is Dual, Dual Sense Edge. And then you go and you look, and then there's a timestamp for Dual Sense Edge. You listen to the little section, and I say, if I had to guess, I would say upwards of around 200, I think. And wham, bam. And it makes sense. I mean, it makes sense the the Xbox whatever elite controller is around this same price the thing is is that like the dual sense is pretty fucking good already and so i cannot imagine spending 200 dollars on a controller that's literally almost half the price of the console <laughs> for a fucking controller there was a post so the, the, yeah this literally has to be the most dope fucking controller on the planet for me to be willing to pay. And it doesn't really seem to be. It. Here's the thing. I There was a post on Reddit about this. And all I could think was, if they're charging $200 for a controller, what the hell are they going to charge for the VR2 with those two special controllers? I'm telling you, it's at least 500 at least. There's no way it's going to be more than the console, but you could be right about the $500 price point. I still think it's going to be lower, but I, I can see your your chain of logic there for sure. But I, I mean, I don't want to manifest it because I wish it was going to, I hope it's going to be cheaper than that, but I just, I really don't think that Sony's going to be able to, they could probably make it for less, but I, I don't know. The difference between a controller in a in a headset though is that the controller doesn't sell software. A, a VR headset will, right? So they could probably cut costs a little bit there. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, that that's that's that. But uh this is this is kind of interesting also. So we had the really big Resident Evil uh broadcast, the feature, and we also got the uh a big Silent Hill thing that happened. And I didn't know this was happening. So it is the season for horror games. You guys know that. Or horror games. However you want to pronounce it. Some people say horror games because they can't pronounce it right. And then you're like, what? Um, But yeah, I did not say that. I said horror games and horror games. Um, On top of all RE, RE stuff we saw, there was a huge Silent Hills feature. Konami, Konami, whatever you want to call them. They revealed 
three trailers, I believe. Silent Hill F, no one knows what that is. They didn't really go into detail. It's just this like minute long trailer. Um, Silent Hill Townfall, which is a new game. Um, it's gonna be come. It's gonna be coming our way um, from developer uh, Stories Untold and Observation Team No Code. And then er- Annapurna Interactive is gonna be publishing that title, um, which is Silent Hills or Silent Hill Townfall, along with Konami. And then they also showed a proper Silent Hill 2 remake in the works. And they revealed a Silent Hill Ascension. No one knows what that is either. Um, it's supposedly a live experience that blends streaming and video games. No fucking clue what that means. And then there's a new movie in the works as well. So this is a really weird uh, feature. They didn't really... I don't know, man. It's like they... They almost it's almost like they knew that the Resident Evil shit was happening. And granted, it is horror season, so is this the right time? Yes. But did they did they execute on this? I don't even know what we got. I I'm so confused about these trailers. I don't know, Jake. Did you see any of this? I didn't watch any of it. I mean I, I noticed I saw that they announced uh the remake of Res uh, of Silent Hill two, which I think is the most coveted one. But uh, and, but to be f- completely honest, that is not coming from any experience. I've never played much Silent Hill, so I'm not really sure. But I don't know. I mean, if it's, I hope it's good. I hope I hope it's what people want. And I'm not really. I don't really have much to say other than that. I mean, I the studios that they have kind of working on them. I don't know if they're going to be that successful. I mean, when you're talking about something like Resident Evil 4 Remake, I mean, this is Capcom doing it themselves. Right. This isn't, you know, them shoveling it off to some fucking other studio right. that's got a B-tier reputation like they're doing with Silent Hill. So I'm not sure how this is going to work out, but hopefully it works out because I know people really do like Silent Hill too. I don't know about these other games that I yeah, it's really bizarre, and and I've never I don't think I've even played a Silent Hills game. Um, I did play PT, but that that was never confirmed to be a Silent Hill thing. But I guess it's just interesting. And uh, if I had to give either Resident Evil or Silent Hill my vote of confidence, it's going to Resident Evil for sure, hands down, hundred percent of the time. But that's just because that's the franchise I like, because that's the one I've played, and I like it, so I didn't go anywhere else. So. Um, they got me. They got me from uh, what's the what's the quote? You had me at hello or something. What in what, uh, show me the money? You had me at what? Yeah. What the fuck is that line in that show? Um, ah, it doesn't matter. They they had me at at Resident Evil. So, anyways, next news. You're talking about Jerry Maguire. Yes. What what do you say? You had me at hello. Is that what they said? You had yeah. me at hello. Yeah. They had me at hello. <laughs> they had me at Resident Evil. <laughs> They won me over there. Um, news point. Next news point. Correct. Uh, Final Fantasy. Uh, Final Fantasy 16 is on target for their summer 2023 release. Um, it was stated with regard, quote, with regards to development, the team has turned the corner and entered the home stretch. End quote. This comes from producer Naoki Yoshida um, and while director Hiroshi Takai stated, quote, as the game edges closer to completion, the team has turned its full attention to debugging and final adjustments, end quote. So that's exciting. Final Fantasy 16 on target. That's awesome because the game doesn't come out till next summer. So they've got a whole shitload of time for them to be able to squash bugs. Yeah. Now, it's probably going to be a big game. So I'm sure the bug squashing is a big task. But I don't know, man. I I am cautiously optimistic about this i'm sure it's going to be i'm sure it's going to do well but the most recent trailer of it was seemed a little bit much for me in terms of like what i want out of a final fantasy game but we'll see i'm still cautiously excited about this game and hopefully it's as good as the initial trailer made it kind of look like it was going to be back in the medieval setting and all that kind of stuff it, it seems like it could be pretty neat. Yeah, I'm with you. Well, Jake, that's the end of the news. And for all the normal listeners, you guys know that we're going to talk about the games coming to the 
PlayStation Network here. And uh, so we've got games hopping along. Now, this didn't come way of Push Square because they don't post their list until Sunday. We're recording on Saturday. I found this on Android something. I don't know what. But interesting enough, it looks like they don't post all the baloney games. So these all seem like relatively important games or games that you may have heard of. Um, so we're just going to go down this list real quick. And they're not all just this week. We're going to take us through all of October here out. So Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed came out on the 18th. Them's Fighting Herds came out on the 18th. Dragon Quest X Online All-in-One Package Version 1-6 to came out came out October 20th. Warhammer 40,000 Shooters Blood and Teeth, October 20th. Mount and Blade 2 Banner Lord, October 25th. Banner Lord, that's a cool name. I like that. Uh Yomawari Lost in the Dark, October 25th. Aquarium, October 27th. Da Capo 4, October it's about playing guitar in the fourth fourth fret. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Da Capo 4. Uh, October 27th, Signalis, October 27th, Star Ocean, The Divine Force on October 27th, Dungeon Munchies on October 28th, Resident Evil Reverse, we already talked about this, October 28th, and then Gotham Knights, October 21st, and Persona 5 Royal, October 21st. So those two games are out. I don't believe Gotham Knights is doing very well. I know the Tales from the Borderlands uh, didn't review well that we talked about last episode and uh, no clue about Persona 5 Royal. Uh, Persona 5 Royal is far and away probably the most well critically reviewed game on this list. Huh. The, I think, I think the, I, I was just looking at Metacritic because I was curious about what Gotham Knights scored at. I think, I think right now it's at like a 68 or 69. Yeah. I, I think Persona 5 Royal is at, like, fucking, like, a 95 or some dumb shit like that. Which, I I say that not, I don't mean that in, like, a pejorative sense, but, like, because Persona, 93 is what it's at right now. Persona 5 is so good, but it's so fucking long. So if you if you have any intention of playing this game and you've never played it before, just expect to put 130 hours into it. Just to beat the fucking game. So if you are into that, it's far and away one of the best JRPGs ever made. But it is so fucking long. So um, that's cool. Gotham Knights, I was kind of hoping for a little bit more out of this game. It seems like people are really kind of struggling with it. I don't know if there's bugs or, or what the issue is, but people aren't aren't like super stoked on it right now. Um, as far as the rest of these games go... I don't know, but uh, it's amazing to me how many fucking Warhammer 40k games are out there, and they keep releasing them. I have no idea. I've never heard of this fucking game before, <clears throat> but it seems like every couple of months we get a new Warhammer game, and we've been getting one for like the past 10 years, Yeah. so I don't know what all these games are. There's only one that interests me, Space Marines 2. Space Marine 2, yeah. <laughs> it's the only one. <laughs> the only one i tried to do a warhammer uh, turn-based game and it was fine it was a, it was a space marine game but it, w- it wasn't that one um because those yeah. are more uh whatever you want to call them that time. one that just came out i'm trying to even tied or something it is I mean, there's vermin tide and vermin tide 2 which supposedly supposedly are really good but they're multiplayer games um, there's another one that was like the evolution of that and it's like something that just came out. Maybe it might even be an early access still, but it looks really cool too, but it's also a multiplayer game, which I'm not super into. Um, Warhammer is such a dope universe. I just wish that they would give it to a studio like, I don't know, to like a really, really like high class studio to make a game in that universe. Cause it has so much rich lore that you can pull from that it could be really, really dope. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, I mean, other than that, everything on this list, I don't really know what to say other than I do recommend Persona 5. Other than that, I don't have any experience with any of these games, so I can't really make any comments. Fair enough. I'm going to I'm gonna send you a text message right now, Jake, because I have a quick story. Maybe I'll put it up on the uh, Patreon for everybody. But I, uh, I've been working... 
<laughs> I've been working on a Michael Myers costume for Halloween. And uh, I've got it pretty good at this point. Um, but I sent it to Nate because I saw Nate plays drums in the flood. And uh, I sent it to Nate because I saw him downtown. I was driving and he was, we were like yelling at each other's windows, talking to one another. And uh, I just decided to send him that picture because he's a big horror movie fan. And uh, what did he say? He said something like, uh, oh, are you going trick or treat? And then I, I sent him something stupid like, um, well, I was like, you know, I may, I may not. I might knock on some doors. I might knock on your doors. <laughs> don't be scared. <laughs> and he's like, don't worry. We're, we're not going to be home. And then, and then I was like, well, we're definitely handing out candy. And he's like, that's cool. You dress up when you hand out candy. And, uh, we like to do that. You know, we like to dress up, but one year I dressed like Jason dude. And like people were too scared to come get candy from our house. Like I, I just stood in the doorway and I had a big pail of candy and like kids were like almost crying and I felt really bad. So I had to like take the mask off, you know, for like half the people that came to our neighborhood. But like I was approaching it from that from the attitude that like young idiotic teenagers that are too old to go trick or treating, you know, come to our neighborhood because we get a million trick or treaters. And it was like they might appreciate, you know, a good scary costume. You you go out and you see all these trick or treaters, like they're not like, where's the scare in Halloween anymore? That's all. That's all I got to say. Like, <laughs> nope. Everyone's dressing like video game characters. Everyone's dressing like, I don't know, like whoever they, you know, WWE stars or whatever, Power Rangers or, you know, Marvel superheroes. Like, where's the scare? You got to be scary at Halloween. There's got to be a couple of us out there. It makes it fun. But uh, it does concern me a little bit looking so much like Michael Myers because. I'm afraid I'm going to get shot or something if I decide to take a walk around the neighborhood after we run out of candy, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, so, like, kind of a a little bit of a related story. My wife's cousin, she they have three kids, and they're both, you know, where we've been close with them for since they were really little. Yeah. I mean, I remember going over there and spending time with them when, um, the youngest was barely a year old and the oldest was like six or seven years old. And now the oldest is like graduating from high school this year. So the, the middle child is super into video games yeah. and she, she loves like everything, but she's really into that game undertale right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. And so, my wife is making her a uh, a mask for Halloween that is one of the characters from Undertale. And it's like a – it almost looks kind of like a – I've never played the game, so I'm not super – I don't know who the character is. But um, it looks like a mix between like a ghost and like a skeleton almost like it's it's really really weird looking so but anyway halloween is one of those holidays that i wish i had the ability to enjoy it to its fullest yeah if that makes any sense you know we don't i mean sarah and i don't really go out and do anything anymore and we don't have like a plethora of friends that are throwing parties and shit like that. So it's not yeah. like we're going to Halloween parties or any of this stuff. But uh, I like I almost envy a little bit people that have the ability to do this. And it's one of the things I miss about living in town was getting trick or treaters because you could like dress up and sit on the porch and hand out candy. And it's kind of like a way for you to win a wholesome way for you to enjoy the holiday without like going and partying and stuff like that. Right. So it comes to you. It, yeah. It's, it's interesting. So, um, but that's cool. I, I did see you. I saw your, your picture <laughs> of you dressed up as Michael Myers and that's pretty, pretty good costume. Yeah. I even bought black boots. I have black boots that I got for like 30 bucks and, uh, I'm just going to be Michael Myers every Halloween now. That's just how it has to be <laughs> because, uh, it's not like a really expensive costume to do and, and you can do it too at home. 
um, listeners. So you just get a Michael Myers mask, get a cover, a set of blue coveralls, dark navy blue coveralls, and black boots. That's all you need. Just make sure the mask is right. And uh, you look scary as shit. Like, even Charles was like, she goes, I know it's you, but it's really freaky. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's the point. That's the point. Because I look like Michael Myers, and Michael Myers is scary. So, yeah, it's good. It's good. So, yeah, very fun. Very fun season, I agree. But uh, let's just close things out. Jake, thanks for coming in and doing the podcast on Saturday evening. I'm bummed I didn't see Lucero, but I'm happy to have spent the evening with you doing uh, video games. So I'm going to try to maybe finish out The Watcher, which is that Netflix movie. It's kind of sp- spooky series, and I've got like about 20 minutes left of that, and then I'm done with it, and then jump back into Plague Tale. I did I did have one mistake, one um, glitch in Plague Tale um, that made me restart at the previous save. And it was just something stupid. So we'll, we'll talk more about it later. But just so the listeners know, it's not free of glitches. I've had one glitch so far, but I'm into like chapter six. So I think it was really a one-off thing. I haven't had any issues except for the one thing. And uh, it was just kind of annoying, but it's going to happen. The game's early still. It just came out. Uh, all right. So that's all I got. Jake, you have anything you want to close with? Um, Nope. After I get off here, I'm going to eat some dinner. And I think Sarah and I... We're gonna spend our evening watching the the new Hellraiser movie. Oh, nice! That's gonna be that's gonna be our uh, ho- little Halloween kind of. We do, we do like usually every year we we watch like at least the first six Friday the Thirteenth movies just because they're so fucking good. They get a little bit dicey after the sixth one. I mean, even the sixth one is a little bit kind of yeah. But like, but it's just fun because. It gets a little. It, it's like where it starts to jump the shark, and they have like that Alice Cooper song in it, and it's like, it, it it's pretty it's pretty cool. But like after that, you've got fucking Jason in Manhattan and Jason in space Jason and all X, shit. Yeah. But I, uh, um, yeah, we're good. But we we both really like the first, in the first and in, in the second, I guess, but especially the first Hellraiser movie from way back in the day. They drove that fucking franchise into the ground too. They did, but. They 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 made a new this this they just a few weeks ago released a reboot of Hellraiser and apparently it's pretty good like it it takes a lot of it it pays a lot of homage to the original um, it's not John Carpenter it's uh oh who the fuck made him Wes Craven um what no 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 um who made Hellraiser, uh, Clive Barker. Yes, thank you. The the original like it, Clive Barker kind of mentality. So I am excited to try that. So that's what we're gonna do tonight, and then uh, tomorrow, hopefully, we'll enjoy some great weather again before it gets really shitty out. Yeah, be safe, you guys. Go out on the bike. Did you uh, did you happen to see the new Halloween movie, Halloween Ends? No, but I wanted to watch. I wanted we watch so. Halloween is a franchise that annoys the shit out of me yeah, for same. one particular reason because the canon is so fucked up yeah, right, right, in right. the in the movies, right? I I believe the way that it is actually like the canon works is that it's like the first movie, then the movie from like 2016, then the movie from like 2020 and then the movie from this year. That's like the actual canon, but there's like five movies in the middle of there that they made that are not technically canonical. Right. Like like Halloween H2O and all this shit. Because I looked it up H2O at one point H2O was time. actually a good one. I liked that movie. That was from the 90s, yeah, right? I think so. The late 90s, early 2000s. So Halloween, Halloween Kills, and Halloween Ends. Yeah. I think... Um, or how they're doing it. There might have been another one in there, but yeah, there's like there's basically like three or four movies that's like that are you can watch them in series and that's like canonical. Story, yeah, yeah, because they they all of them have what's her name in it, um, Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis, yeah, and so I I would like to watch them because I do like that kind of movie. I'll say I was I wasn't a big fan of how they ended it. Uh, if I'm being completely honest, Halloween ends. Didn't like it. Meow. Uh, I'll say this without spoiling anything. Uh, 
it, I liked that it was narrative driven, but 55 minutes into the show, Michael Myers had not yet killed a person. 55 mm. minutes. No boy, no. And the movie's no only, what are you doing? It's a fucking slasher movie. Yeah, and the movie's an hour and 50 minutes. So you don't get a lot of Michael Myers in Halloween Ends. For, ha, ha, it's like ha, halfway through the movie, he hasn't killed someone. Right, and and it's his, it's supposed to be his swan song, right? This is supposed to be it for him. And they they really did him dirty in this one, and uh, I get what they did, but I don't like what they did. I understand mm. the story and what they did, but I don't like it. I think they should have just done something completely freaking different and made him go out with a bang, and instead they kind of let him go out like a like a freaking. In my opinion, it should have literally been nothing but two hours of Michael Myers fucking murdering people. A hundred percent. And then they should have figured they should have figured out how to like finally kill him at the end. But or if have it's him the last win, movie, maybe, right? Or or even maybe have him fucking win. I don't know. I haven't seen the movie, but like, dude, it should have literally because people don't watch those movies because they give a shit about the people who live. They, they they watch they watch slasher they want to see Michael Myers kills. destroy people. They, like nobody watches uh, a slasher. Nobody watches you know Friday the Thirteenth Part Three because they give a shit about the main character you know and her little brother. They watch it because they want to see that dude in the wheelchair get fucking axed in the face and fall down a flight of stairs. <laughs> That's so, so that sounds so <laughs> non politically correct. But I mean, yeah, yeah, we want to see the murderers. <laughs> we want to see we want to see people get slashed and taken out in creative ways. That's what they're all about. That's what the foundation of slashers are. It's that exhilaration. It's that whole thing about like being like, oh shit, the suspense. Like, where's he at? The music. And then it's like, you know, and then it shows like the bad guy or something. You're like, you see him like lumbering in the woods. And like, that's what you want to see. I'll just say I did not appreciate what they did with Halloween ends. As a standalone movie, it would be fine, but it did not feel like a Halloween movie to me. Fair enough. And I was annoyed by it. Anyways, let's sign off. Let's get out of here. Uh, Thanks for tuning in to episode 246 of PS This Is Awesome. I know we got a little divergent. Jake and I both really appreciate the holiday right now, so we got a little excited about talking about scary stuff. But we did talk about a lot of good things, like the RE Showcase and uh, the Callisto Protocol running at you know 60 frames per second, which is awesome. Silent Hill Showcase a little bit. And then you know we, we, we did discuss Plague Tale. So if you liked what we talked about today, come back next week, please, and invite your friends. Bring them along. We'll be here. So... Without further ado, we're going to sign off like Alan Wake Remastered, Atomic Heart, and Axiom Verge. P.S. P.S. This is awesome. This is awesome.